Yeah, so moya moya is, it's actually a Japanese word, it means puff of smoke. So it's a slightly strange condition. It's a rare condition that affects children and adults, um, where you get narrowing of the main blood vessels that supply blood to the brain. And so the brain's hungry, it needs blood, so it makes these little tiny blood vessels that replace the big blood vessels. And that's what looks like the smoke, and that's why it gets called moya moya. The reason it's important is those children and adults are affected because of the narrowness and the tiny blood vessels can have strokes either due to blockage of blood vessels or due to bleeding and um, uh, it's a rare but it's an important condition um, that we look after a lot of children at Great Ormond Street and adults at Queen mm. Square. Um, there's a correlation between radiation exposure and the formation of moya moya and it's quite well recognized it's been known for a long time that one of the things that can happen after radiotherapy are strokes. Um, as you know, there are different types of radiotherapy. So um, essentially the more focal and the more conformal a radiation treatment is, the less likely it is to cause that. And that's actually not something that's seen, for example, with gamma knife, which is something I know that, 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 that we do here. So it, to my knowledge, I've not seen any cases of more related to um, gamma knife. And that's probably because gamma knife is so, um, is so focal. Clearly gamma knife isn't suitable for every condition. Some conditions need other forms of radiotherapy. So proton beam therapy or external beam radiotherapy and it's those patients that seem to have that propensity to develop more and more. Certainly not all patients have radiotherapy develop more and more. I think that's very important to be uh, aware of but there are certain things that can make it more likely so underlying conditions like neurofibromatosis one some types of tumors but their location lead to that so it is an association but it's not something that we see in all, in all patients and it's something that we we can treat it's a treatable condition um, both with medicines and with surgery mm -hmm. um, but it's something that we're I think there's increasing awareness of and children are now screened as well as having their brain scans to look at their tumor they'll have an MRA scan to look at the blood vessels as well which will give you an early warning sign if any more is developing very good thank you so so this uh, an event like today is really the opportunity to bring um, specialists and, and those kind of observations or piece of research together and um, precisely as you explained so you can exchange on the findings, the results, the uh, monitoring of patients over the course of many years and discussing those together yeah. to gain better understanding on a particular pathology or, or work or new advances or new it, techniques. Exactly I mean I think when you have a rare condition so vascular um, one of my main interests is vascular conditions in children. So that would be um, moya moya, arterial venous malformations or AVMs, which is what I treat with a gamma knife, um, brain aneurysms, cavernomas, also which can be treated with gamma knife or with surgery. Um, you know, these are rare conditions, thankfully, but so there are very few centers that have large numbers of these patients. So one of the ways we share knowledge is by working with other large international centers. So certainly in the Western world, Boston Children's and Sick Kids in Toronto are two of the leading children's hospitals internationally. And um, Great Ormond Street is a very big center for pediatric neurovascular disease. So what we find in the collaboration is probably sort of developed over about a decade, really, but it's become more active in the last, you know, three or four years. Um, it's by sharing. And I think what's really important is sharing multidisciplinary learning. So not just neurosurgeons talking to neurosurgeons or neurologists talking to neuro neurologists or you know radiotherapists talking to radiotherapists but um, you know we've got nurses we've got anaesthetists we've got um, basic scientists geneticists all represented and so I think as well as learning from the different centers we're learning within the centers from from working as a team and I think one of the things that I've really learned is looking after these rare or difficult conditions you need to work as a team mm -hmm. um, one person can manage uh, these complex cases on their own Thank you.